America's rare forgotten four-cylinder muscle car, the 1961-63 Pontiac Tempest. The Pontiac Tempest was a revolutionary car that embodied Pontiac's determination to stand out in the compact car market. Unlike other American car makers that took more traditional routes, Pontiac aimed to create a car that was innovative in both design and engineering. This approach led to the creation of the Tempest, a vehicle that combined unique styling with mechanical features. Pontiac's journey to create the Tempest began in the late 1950s, a time when the American car market was changing rapidly. The success of Volkswagen in the United States, along with the economic recession of 1958, forced the big three American car makers to reconsider their focus on large, luxurious cars. The market demand was shifting towards smaller, more economical vehicles, and car manufacturers had to adapt quickly. Ford responded with the Falcon, which became an instant hit, while Chrysler introduced the Valiant, a car that was well-received due to its European-influenced design and reliable engine. Even smaller manufacturers like Studebaker and AMC had already ventured into the compact car segment before the Big Three did. General Motors decided to offer a range of compact cars that would appeal to different tastes. At one end of the spectrum was the Radical, rear-engine 1960 Corvair, while at the other end was a completely conventional Chevy 2, which was introduced two years later. Positioned between these two extremes were the BOP Compacts, Buick Special, Oldsmobile F85, and Pontiac Tempest. These cars shared a 112-inch wheelbase platform and the same basic body, but each model featured significant mechanical differences that set them apart. Among these, the Pontiac Tempest stood out for its unique and advanced drivetrain, making it one of the most innovative cars of its time. The development of the Tempest cars was driven by Pontiac's desire to avoid simply rebranding the Corvair as their own. GM's management initially considered extending the Corvair's platform to other divisions, including Pontiac. However, Pontiac's general manager, Semin E. Bunky Knudsen, was adamant that the division should not receive a badge-engineered version of the Corvair. Knudsen believed that selling a rebranded Corvair as a Pontiac would be problematic for several reasons. First, it would create confusion for Pontiac salespeople, who would have to justify the higher price of a new Pontiac that was essentially a repackaged Chevrolet. Second, the Corvair's rear engine air-cooled design did not align with Pontiac's traditional front-engine water-cooled vehicles, making it difficult to differentiate the car from its Chevrolet counterpart. Third, there were no significant styling changes that could be made to the Corvair to make it distinctly Pontiac, as the rear engine layout left little room for modification. With these concerns in mind, Pontiac needed to develop a new direction for their compact car. This task fell to John Z. DeLorean, who was Pontiac's director of advanced engineering at the time. DeLorean was determined to create a compact car that was more than just a smaller version of Pontiac's existing lineup. He envisioned a car that would offer the comfort and ride quality of a larger vehicle, while being economical to purchase and maintain. DeLorean's vision included a design that would achieve an ideal 50-50 weight distribution, which was crucial for handling and stability. To accomplish this, he proposed using a flat four, a rear-mounted transaxle, and a flexible drive shaft, an approach that was revolutionary for an American car. DeLorean's design was not without its challenges. For one, Buick and Oldsmobile, who were developing their own versions of the Y-body platform, chose to stick with conventional drivetrain layouts. This meant that Pontiac's engineers had to find a way to incorporate DeLorean's ambitious ideas while keeping costs under control. One of the most innovative solutions they implemented was the use of flexible drive shaft, which earned the nickname Rope Drive. This nickname was somewhat misleading as the drive shaft was actually a high-strength torsion bar made from a blend of nickel, chrome, and molybdenum. The drive shaft's small diameter, just three quarters of an inch for manual transmissions and 0.65 inches for automatics, was made possible because it transmitted engine torque before it was multiplied by the transmission, reducing the stress on the shaft. The flexible drive shaft allowed for a nearly flat floor, which was a key feature of DeLorean's design. This not only contributed to the car's spacious interior, but it also helped achieve the desired 50-50 weight distribution. Also, the drive shaft's curvature, combined with rubber bushings inside the torque tube helped dampen vibrations, resulting in a smooth and comfortable ride. The innovative drivetrain layout also enabled the Tempest to be built on the same assembly lines as full-sized Pontiacs, which helped reduce production costs. 
Another major innovation introduced with the Tempest was its engine. While Buick and Oldsmobile chose to power their wide-body cars with new V6 or aluminum V8 engines, DeLorean opted for an inline four-cylinder engine for the Tempest. This engine, known as the Trophy 4, was essentially a 195 cubic inch version of Pontiac's V8 with one bank of cylinders removed. The decision to use a four-cylinder engine was driven by cost considerations as the majority of the development budget had been allocated to the unique drive shaft system. By using existing V8 components, Pontiac was able to keep costs down while still offering an engine that was more powerful than many of its competitors' six-cylinder engines. The Trophy 4 engine was available in several configurations ranging from a basic 110 horsepower version with a single barrel carburetor to a high performance version with a four barrel carburetor and 155 horsepower. Despite its power, the engine was not without its drawbacks. It was heavy, weighing about two thirds as much as the V8, and it suffered from significant vibration due to its large size. However, Pontiac engineers were able to mitigate these issues through the use of special motor mounts and other design features that absorbed much of the engine's vibration, resulting in a surprisingly smooth driving experience. In terms of styling, the Tempest was a success. The car's design was the work of Jack Humbert, who gave it a distinctive look that set it apart from other compact cars on the market. The front end featured a split grille with quad headlamps and a design that recalled the 1959 Pontiac and gave the Tempest a strong family resemblance. The car's overall proportions put it at the upper end of the compact car segment with a wheelbase of 112 inches, an overall length of 189.3 inches, and a width of 72.2 inches. Inside, the Tempest offered a spacious and comfortable environment with large windows that provided excellent visibility and a light, airy feel. Despite the positive reviews, the Tempest faced stiff competition from other compact cars like the Ford Falcon, Chevrolet Corvair, and Chrysler Valiant. In its first year, Pontiac sold 100,783 Tempests, a respectable figure but still below the sales numbers of its competitors. However, the Tempest was the best-selling of the GM Y-Body Trio, indicating that Pontiac's unique approach had resonated with a significant number of buyers. The Trophy 4 engine was also popular, with most Tempests being equipped with it, while the optional 215 cubic inch V8 was chosen only by a small percentage of buyers. For the 1962 model year, Pontiac made several updates to the Tempest. A convertible model was added to the lineup, and the front end received a facelift with a new tri-section grille design. The Trophy 4 engine was also refined, with the high-performance version gaining an additional 11 horsepower. Pontiac even offered a special NASCAR-sanctioned version of the engine through its parts network, which was capable of producing up to 240 horsepower. In 1963, Pontiac aimed to dominate drag racing with the Tempest Lightweight Super Duties. Superstock drag racing had become very popular by then. Pontiac had earlier introduced Super Duty parts in factory-built race cars like the SD, Catalina, and Grand Prix. However, they faced strong competition from Dodge and Plymouth, whose cars had powerful engines and light bodies. Pontiac's initial strategy to reduce weight included using aluminum body panels and drilling holes in frames, creating what were called Swiss cheese frames. Hey, that's it for today's episode. Don't forget to give this video a like and also hit that subscribe button while you're down there.